Hey there, Stefan here. Got your script, so I wanted to uh, take a look at it and get back to you and uh, give you some feedback. So let's. Uh, so what I have, I guess, to describe what I've got is I'm using uh, Unity 4.3. I'm using uh, version 0.1.44 of TextMesh Pro, which is the same one that's on the Asset Store. Uh, I basically have created a TextMesh Pro object to which I've attached uh, this color changer script, which is your script. Um, and let's go take a look at that script. So all I did is I renamed the script, but it's your script here. I've made some changes and I'll go over them uh, as I go through the video. So if we take a look at what we've got here is you basically are declaring a public variable of type color, which is floats. And you're right now it's undefined, so we're going to start with black. You're setting a duration. I changed it for five seconds so that we can see it in the inspector uh, uh, or when we play better. But you're assigning 1.5 for default. Here in Awake, you're take, you're getting a reference to the text mesh pro object, which is real good. Um, here you are basically setting the color. Uh, based on the color that's in the inspector and it's going to start out with black you're setting the alpha to one and you're setting a flag to true if this flag is true then it uh, keeps on going if it's not it bails out the alpha basically starts out at one minus the delta time divided by duration so that allows you to fade over time uh, you're printing a bunch of stuff and here I believe your intent is to set whatever color is in the inspector uh, with a modified alpha back to text mesh pro so let's go take a look at how this behaves. So if I hit play, let's select the object so we can see what's going on. So it's going to start out black. So we're going to be looking for black here and we'll look for the alpha to change. So I hit play and it starts out black and the alpha is fading over the five seconds that we wanted. So this is working fine. Uh, no bugs there. So now let's go change our color and let's set the color to red. And let's test this again. So now we're looking for red, it is red and it's fading, so we're all good. And while we're at it, let's test all the colors like red, green, make sure that works. So that works as well, so we're all good here. Let's set blue, and blue's all good, right? So blue's good and we're all fine. So this appears to be working bug free. Now let's go change our color and instead of using uh, what did red, green and blue have in common? Well, all of their values were 255, right? Let's set the color to something other than 255. Actually, let's set, uh, let's put this here. And let's set the color to um, maybe something like this, okay? And let's hit play and see what color we get. Now if I hit play, oh wait, it's white, what's going on? This isn't working, there's a bug, is there? Uh, let's change the color again. Let's pick some arbitrary color here, uh, like this. It's this weird blue. And wait, it's still white, what's going on? Well, let's take a look. The error is not easy to catch, and I can understand why uh, you made the mistake. And here's where it is. So if you take a look at the Text Mesh Pro color property, and let's uh, actually click on it and let's hit uh, peak at definition. So this shows us that the color property on Text Mesh Pro is a color 32, and basically color 32 is bytes and not floats. And when we're getting it, it's basically we get the value, it returns the color, and that's it. So it's pretty straightforward, right? So here, let's take a look at what's going on, right? So the color is a color 32, which accepts bytes. Color expects red, green, and blue, and alpha to be float values. But here you're reading from TextMesh Pro the color and the red, but you're reading a byte value. So you're intending to basically, your intent was to feed it floats expecting that the values were from 0 to 1, but you're feeding it values from 0 to 255, which is why unless it's a full 255, um, which equals 1, we end up, you know, 254 or something translate to some other weird values, which means it's just broken. So just to show that if we were using 
color 32 that this would work so um, and, and not necessarily color 32 so I'm saying here if I use a color which is a float and I set it give it float values with your alpha and I'm still feeding it into a color 32 unity internally will convert the color which is all based on floats into a color 32 which is bytes so if I save that I just set some arbitrary color but if we look at it here we can see that look it is in fact setting up well we're not using this right now I hard-coded it but it is assigning that correct color so if I was to come back here and revise your code uh, first just minor programming note um, in this case here uh, if I look at your example you're fetching the color property three times from the getter inside of text mesh pro now again if I go to the inspector and I peek at the definition in this case getting it simply returns a value so it's not there's no major overhead to doing it that way but assume that my getter instead of returning float what if it checked a bunch of stuff and did a bunch of things uh, because often when we access properties or getters we don't know exactly what we're getting um, in this case there's no overhead but if there was you'd be incurring this overhead like three times so my recommendation whenever you're gonna fetch a value that's using a, a property or something I would basically here declare a, a, a temporary variable C for color I would fetch the getter or get it once then I basically set the alpha so I'm the alpha is a float so I'm gonna multiply the float by 255 and convert it into a byte and then I'm gonna store it back into the text mesh pro uh, object itself so now let's save that and let's go take a look now we'll pick some random color like this color and hit play and now we see that the color is indeed matching so if I go back pick another color now we can see that everything is working fine so the mistake you made um, was not obvious um, it's I can see how it's pretty easy to miss it because um, I had to look at it to figure out okay what's going on here uh, but that's just you know a simple mistake uh, in terms of why am I using color 32 as opposed to color um, the reason I'm using color 32 is because when you're generating a mesh in unity and you're uh, and when you create a mesh you have a choice you can upload for vertex colors either an array of colors or an array of color 32 and on the surface they appear to be the same thing but that's not the case colors uploading an array of colors is 10 to 15 times slower than uploading to the graphic card a array of color 32 so because of performance optimizations I'm using color 32 now um, I did however so my goal was to get the best optimization possible now the problem with using color 32 as a property is interestingly enough and kind of weird is if you use unity's uh, animation editor uh, so if I open it up and it's on my other screen so if I bring it here uh, pin it there so their animation editor for whatever reason now it's gonna want to save something so I'll just save it um, I can animate like floats right it turns red I can animate like line spacing or basically every property but if I choose face color and tweak it well let me move off red because that creates the illusion that it's working it is not recognizing the color 32 property so basically unity's own animation editor doesn't recognize some of the types that unity works with like color 32 because of that in the latest well in pretty much all of the betas for version uh, 0.1.46 of text mesh pro as well as version 0.45 I've switched from in the inspector I've switched from using color 32 to using color so that it works with the animation editor now internally I still take the color property that you're now feeding or the color gradient 
properties that are still as colors that you're feeding and I'm converting them back to color 32 so I get the performance increase but that issue for other users the potential confusion for that is going to go away so that's basically it let me get rid of this animation component so that's it so it was uh, basically the property field is working fine uh, it was a uh, like I said not an obvious uh, mistake to catch um, and that's basically it. So please uh, let me know your thoughts um, and I look forward to your feedback. Thanks.